And so today I have a pretty short little message and it's about something that dies. On, becomes quite trite and uh, cliche this time of year, and uh, I'm sad that it is, but uh, I guess sometimes it's good to just re-examine what's in front of us and let it mean something anew. So um, I always talk about, I, I've, I've been preaching a lot or giving advice and confession about um, not to take Christmas for granted, and I like to say um, we have commercial Christmas it's not Christmas yet, and uh, we hear all the chintzy songs about baby Jesus and about jingle bells, and we have lights everywhere, and we have hot cocoa, and we're kind of stuck with it. I mean, that's just kind of the culture we are in, and it'd be great if we could move it back about a month and actually celebrate Christmas when Christmas happens, but we're stuck with Christmas and Advent, okay, culturally. Um, but I have been telling people, step back a moment and just realize that this is all uh, about Christmas. Oh, you know, when you see the lights, when you hear the chintzy songs, Christmas was for me, right? The Lord did come for me. He incarnated. He came to save me from my sins. And so I've been telling people, when you see the lights, when you have the abuelita's hot chocolate or whatever your hot cocoa is, and, you know, uh, enjoy that. Take back, step back just a moment and truly enjoy. Thank the Lord. Turn that mundane thing into a moment of thanksgiving and thank the Lord for his saving power for having come. I just want to hone in on just one little simple thing here, right? We have the angel coming into Joseph's dream and telling him, right, take Mary into your home. Uh, the Holy Spirit has conceived the child in her. And he says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. There was deep yearning for a Messiah at that time to come and uh, kick the Romans' butts, as it were, right? Kick them out of the, the governmental role and restore Israel. Jesus came and it was not what they were anticipating, but he was still a savior. It just wasn't what they were uh, thinking. And so just imagine, right, Christ coming to save people from their sins, that there's this deep anticipation. And for Joseph to sit back and say, wow, this is finally happening, right? For all the sorrows, all the griefs, all the en enslavement that all of the people, all the whole world had been suffering from their sins primarily, from their bad habits, their vices, that someone is coming to save them from those things. I think going back to like the, you know, the, the chintzy uh, Christmas songs and everything, right? Um, we do have problems, uh, and, and so why do we take this beautiful Christmas season for granted, albeit it's a month too early, right? We, we, we have just as many sins as problems as the Jews at the time back then that were awaiting Messiah. Um, so make use of it. Make use of it. Let that beautiful anticipation, the good news of Christ having come, fill your heart. Truly pray with all the, all the Christmassy things now up through the, Christmas, the actual Christmas season. Um, I sing for y'all a prelude right before. It's from Handel's Messiah, and it's uh, He Shall Feed His Flock. One of the, one of the uh, arias from the Advent portion of Handel's Messiah. If you're not familiar with the opera world, um, there's the composer, right, the Handel, Georg Friedrich Handel, who composed the Messiah, but the one who writes the text is called the librettist. And that's still true even today. That's how operas work today. A friend, a good pal, a good poet pal of, of the composer usually writes the text, and then it is left to the musical genius of the composer to set it to music. Charles Jennings, a good friend of Handel, had a brother who committed suicide. And this came out actually right in the throes of the Enlightenment. Right in the throes of the Enlightenment. And even back then, the Enlightenment and the ideas of kind of man separated from God, man just coming out on top, glorifying himself, were already kind of eating into people's worth, dignity, self-image. Charles Jennings knew this very well uh, on account of his brother. And so he wanted to give hope. He wanted to give hope to the world through this beautiful text. He didn't write the text. Obviously, the entirety of Handel's Messiah is unique because it comes from the scriptures. But what I was singing earlier... Uh, is something that's really, really central for all of us. Come unto him, all ye that labor. Come unto him, all ye that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. After the aria, it says, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. 
My friends have kind of been yakking on here uh, about the same simple point, but I really just want to drive it home. Don't let it be simple. Don't take the Christmas for granted, even commercial Christmas. Take that light and easy burden. Take that light and easy yoke. In a very real way, we always have access to it, but in a very special way, we celebrate the Lord's love for us this Advent. So do not take it for granted. Come unto him and rest. Rest in the beautiful love that Christ has for each and every one of you as we reaffirm, as we relive the beautiful incarnation by which he came, uh, which began that saving plan for him to save us, for him to die, resurrect, ascend into heaven, where he now awaits all of you to be with him forever. So do not take it for granted. Pray with the chintzy things and the abuelita chocolate, okay? Um, but truly rest. Ask for that beautiful heavenly rest at this very Mass.